All right, welcome. Quick intro today. Um, we are talking. Well, the topic on here is improving youth players' skill set on the field. Um, but before we talk about anything, what want to? Uh, if you're interested in joining us for our passing academy, it's my, academy. It's myfootballcamps.com slash passing. That's our passing university that we're running in Hazlitt, New Jersey. Um, that first night was last uh, on Monday. The today tonight again is a. Um, we'll be going 6 p.m. for youth, 7 p.m. for high school, middle school, and it's a great opportunity to really to to get yourself ready for the season. That's the bottom line objective. Um, no fluff. No, you know, listen. You, if you want to make 50 moves on the side, you can do that over at warm while you're warming up. But then you're going to learn the skill sets. I mean, yes, we're going to run routes. Yes, we're going to teach you. Yes, you're going to catch the ball. But we want to get your the skill sets better. Uh, both quarterback and receiver slash tight end. So check that out. Um, I'll put that into the banner below here, and um, so you can go go do it. Obviously, for for our parents that are on, for the younger kids, our youth camps are coming up in July. You can go myfootballcamps.com slash youth, and all the stuff is on there. Um, if you're coming to showcases for NUC Sports, just go right to myfootballcamps.com. You'll find one that's uh, hopefully within your region. And our all-star game invites are coming out as well. So just a lot, lot of things going on. Check those things out. Okay, and back to back to what we're talking about. So I, one of the things um, I thought was really interesting doing the first day of the, the, the passing academy, um, and, and you were over working with the receivers, but just watching the quarterbacks, is that and, – and I see a lot of these kids in flag football, and, and they throw pretty decent flag football, but what I realized – after doing the passing academy first day is the fundamental development of the skill set, like technique wise, even though someone has an arm, like they might look good in flag or, or even they could throw in a regular tackle, but they have to develop from the ground up that foundation. And that foundation is so important because that allows you. And I, and in my opinion, when you see guys and in my experience, when you see guys who, you know, everyone wants to make an off-platform throw, right? Well, if your fundamentals are sound, your off-platform throw will keep your mechanics in place and you'll be able to do those kind of things. But if you don't have the mechanics, your off-platform throw is going to go as an interception to the other direction um, or just won't even get to your desired target in the, in the right way. And I noticed at just in the first session with the young guys, um, we were able to get almost all of them to instead of hold the ball like this, and I see high school kids do this, by the way, quarterback, to get it right in here, carry it within the chest, uh, let it rest with against your thumbs in the middle of your chest so you have a firm carry, but it's relaxed. Your body's relaxed. You don't want to be a tight quarter. You don't want to – this is how they used to do uh, Right here, tight. Your shoulders are all tight, and now all of a sudden you're supposed to throw loose. Keep it in here nice and loose because it's it's all these things are the same principles, right? If you want to explode, it's not being tight running that makes you explode. It's relaxing yourself so the explosion can happen. So you have a firm grip, but your shoulders and your arms are under control relaxation, right? You don't want your shoulders all up high. Nice and relax. So when you go to release the ball, you can get maximum power. It's just when you watch a sprinter run, okay, they're driving hard, but their face, if you see their face is like, it's nice and relaxed, right? That means their shoulders are relaxed. That means, so they're able, they're, they're in control, right? And allows them to go fast. So it's the same kind of principle. And I saw the kids, right, right. The one, the great thing about young kids is they're sponges, right? So if you show them it, you, they, that's what they start to do. And within a few weeks, they'll just do that all the time. And then, you know what? You won't even have to really revisit it other than uh, cleaning things up every year. So that now that's done, right? And then the next thing is the release, right? A lot of kids, because they're young, if they play baseball, they kind of are – they go out a little bit to the side. Their elbow's too far. I just kind of – they're too far out here instead of in control and in here by your – so they'll throw like this, you know, like almost like you throw a pie, right? So they start to do this now, 
they're in a better position, stronger position to utilize the muscles that are most powerful, which is your core muscles, your legs, hips, stomach, you know, um, uh, your, your, your butt, your upper quad, right? So th that's your, your whole entire core is your most powerful. So the arm is what allows you to be accurate, but the body is allow you, allows you to give you the power. If your arm gets extended out here, okay, what starts to happen is it, it won't matter what you're doing with your body because your arm is no longer a, a proper extension of your core. It's now away from your core and now is its own entity. And that's a problem because now you're putting all the stress on your shoulder to be able to throw an elbow. And that's not even talking about how the ball comes out differently and all that other stuff, right? So, you know, guys, so just in that first day, over and over emphasizing, I saw young kids. I'm talking young me, first first and second graders doing it. Um, obviously, yeah, we, had we, kids had, we, had young kids. we had some of those young guys. And they yeah, they're yeah. Young. They're sponges, you know. I think the most important thing about like what we do and how we do it is that we're creating good habits, right? And if you get those good habits at a young age, they're going to constantly do and what you want to push to them. And what I think that we do a really great job of doing is that, look, every rep is important, but every and every rep has to be the same. And now when you create that habit, now you're not even thinking about it. And when you take the thought process out of it, now you can just go that much faster with everything. Right. So I think like, as we go forward, you know, you look at some of those things, like what you're talking about, like, you know, for the QBs, having the ball in front, you know, keeping loose, you know, relaxed, all that type of stuff. Same thing with the wideouts. Right. So, you know, we start out and we, and we teach them to start and stance. Right. So the whole important thing is, Hey, you need to have the same stance every single play and come off that ball the exact same way. And if you continue to do that through your repetitions, rep, 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 and they're all the same. Now what happens is when you get up to the ball, you're going to just get in that stance and you're going to be comfortable with it. And now it, it, like I said, it allows you to go that much faster. You're creating muscle memory and at a young age to create that good muscle memory and those good habits going forward, then the body just takes care of itself in in the maturity aspect, getting bigger, faster, stronger, without even you know having to do any any work. That's going to happen, right? So you see these guys, and you got to remember what they're looking at, right? So social media wise, they're looking at all these things. They're looking at guys that are older than them, high school guys, college guys, pro guys, guys that can do things, but they've they've worked to get to that place. You know that these guys are at that starting point and need to just trust that. Hey, I'm gonna do the exact same thing over and over and over to create that muscle memory within my brain. So I don't even have to think about getting up in my stance or eyes looking in at the ball or, you know, nice, you know, bent in the knees so I can explode out. 75% of my weight should be on my front foot so I don't fall step. And I think that's really like the, one of the most important things is your footwork coming off the line. We talk about it all the time and we laugh about, you know, you see all these guys on every, on every, you know, social media site or whatever, and they're dancing all over the place and they're going here to here to here to here. When in reality, those first three steps, four steps, five steps need to be a vertical, right? Push out like you're thinking you want to make that corner think you're going deep every single play, whether it's a run or a pass. And if you can create that, then I think you're already ahead of the game. There's no doubt about it. Um, I think it's a, it's an important thing. And, and also, obviously, the, the, the basics of catching, right? Okay. So you can catch a ball from a few feet. You can catch a ball from 10 feet. You can catch the ball from 20 feet. You can catch the right. ball from 30 feet. But now you got to catch it while moving. Correct. Right? So that was one of the first things I noticed. Like, your kids that are really – especially the young kids. Those kids are good athletes to begin with, right, right. naturally. And they could catch from static. Correct. Okay? They can stand. Now, they can stand with their dad and have a catch, right? And correct. they can do all that stuff. And I think the most important thing is going through that catching process. You know, taking a picture and look. That's how I teach it, right? I was taught that way. Like everything should be a picture, and the also it, your eyes actually catch the ball, right? So wherever that ball is, your eyes need to be, and your head needs to be. So it's almost it's a hell of a teaching tool, to be honest, right? If you're teaching, hey, I'm going to take a picture, and wherever the ball is, my head goes, right? So now it comes down to it. Say, hey, I get a fast one in there, and I don't catch it, and you take one to the face, you're going to learn how to catch real pretty quick, right? But it's also about eye control, where my eyes need to follow that ball, and my hands should just go there. And then once I catch it, I don't want to fight it. 
I want to almost, you know, kind of cradle it or, or like you're catching an egg, make it soft so that now I can catch. And then the biggest thing that I stress coach, and I know you've been with me for a while and you've heard me say it a thousand times is we catch and we talk, we catch and we talk and you create that muscle memory because, you know, look at it like this. How many times does a receiver catch a ball and instantaneously instantaneously he's not either contacted by someone within one or two steps right so you know that contact's coming so that if we now prepare for that catch talk we're going to have that catch and secure it every single time right and i want to show you something because i'm curious what your thoughts on it and i don't i don't mean to put you on a spot but I, i i i think this guy this is just a random person doing drills Okay, and there are some things I like, but there's one thing you'll notice that I, I, I really have a question about with the receivers thing. And, I, and the reason why I have a question about it because I see it all the time, and I don't know if it's uh, – if I'm the crazy one or or everybody else is crazy. I, I'm trying to figure this out, you know, and you'll see in a second. So watch watch this here, right? I, I don't want to – you know, I want to move the frame because I don't want to call the person out. So because it's not – you know, he's just doing work. And good for him for good for him for putting in work, right? So, uh, but so there are things I like about what he's doing. Like I actually think these are pretty simple drills that are pretty good, okay. But there's one thing that always concerns me that of what he's doing. What what, what does it look like when he changes direction? To, it, to me, it looks like his footwork is out of his framework, right? Like right. when he's when he's making like look how wide he is when he's making so even even step like I mean look how look at that. Wide, why everything is wide now. Look, he's probably that's going to be first of all, before the injury part, yeah. isn't that going to be slower? Correct, that's my thought, right? But my thing also is this too. Look, I get it, he's probably six four, six five, right? He has that length, but to me. When you get out of your framework, and what I mean by that is when your feet come outside of your shoulders, right? I feel like you're almost overemphasizing and putting more pressure on those joints, on those knees, on that ligament, and just overall overextending to a point where now I have to go further. You know, so if I have to go out of my framework, like I said, outside of my shoulders, I think it's going to take you more time to now plant, readjust your weight. And like we were talking about that inner core strength, right? Those abs, obliques, all that kind of stuff. Look at how wide that stance is. He's almost the full width of that, of that hurdle and, and, and moving. And I just don't see where you can generate enough power to now accelerate out of that as a wide out and do what you do. Well, look at the, you know, if I could draw a line on this, he's almost oh, on, he's on his heels, first of all, right? Not good. He's not really pushing off the inner part of his foot because you need to be more pigeon toed. You need to, if you were right. like this, but pigeon toed with your heels out, you might be okay. Yeah, heels out. And, listen, you know exactly how I, uh, and you know how I teach the receiver stances is, you know, hey, you're standing there, feet are shoulder width apart. Take a step like you're walking down the hallway. Okay, that should be your comfort level. Now you take that front foot and you tilt it, right? And you move your toe in just a little bit yep. so that now you have balance, especially in today's game where, hey, we're on the ball. You may be sitting there when a quarterback's trying to change a play, right? Like you want to be comfortable out there in your stance, but you want to be ready to go. So that allows you to create that nice balanced stance, slight bend in your knees, you know, a little lean forward, make Make sure the weight is about 75, 25 on that front foot. And now you're driving out as you explode off the ball. So this is the way that we see it, right? This is exactly opposite of what you want. The knees are pointed inward, right? Okay, which is all that pressure on that ACL and MCL. Everything. Bad. The heel is in and the toe is out. So less power. Correct. Okay. More chance. I mean, if you got rolled up here, you're done ankle wise. I mean, everything. I mean, he could blow, 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 blow every, every CL in that, in that. And everything is just blown out all the way up to your hip, you know? And, and so this toe should be inward. And Correct. The, the heel should be outward. And if I had a thing I could, oh, can I draw? Uh, no, I can't. Now look, if you were to take those hurdles and move them in a little bit, right? Like now I think that would create something where, hey, it's just a quick bam and I'm there. You're never extending outside of your shoulder length. Also, look at his arms, right? Like his arms aren't doing much, you know? And I understand some guys think, hey, you got to bang the drum. Some guys think, hey, just 
normal, whatever, a different kind of pace. For me, I think it's more about comfort for the receiver itself, knowing your own type of, hey, this works for me, this doesn't work for me, right, type of thing. And as they progress right now, a younger guy, you're going to tell them how to do it. You do it this way. But eventually these guys are going to start to see certain things and try certain things and things are going to work for them that don't work for others, right? And I think that's a big part of it too. But it all starts with having to do the same thing every single time you're out there to create that muscle memory that now you do not have to think about the physical part. I don't need to think, hey, I got to get five steps, get my cleats in the ground, get around and turn. You're just naturally, you've done it so much that you know that's what's happening and you just do it, which now allows me to say, okay, as I'm getting, rather than having to think about getting my feet in the ground and get back here, I can now say, hey, that corner's bail and I can now stick it in the ground or hey, that guy's pressing me and I can do this, right? So I think without having to worry about the physical aspect of it, now you can get into the mental side, which will put you on a different level. Now I'm going to show you a, a different one, okay? Um, let me stop sharing here. And we'll start sharing here. And I hope you I hope you don't mind me doing this because I think it's helpful. I, like, I think this is great because this gives a visual for guys to see where in our heads what we're actually talking about and what we're thinking about. Okay. And so like I said, I think it's good for these guys because, like you said, the young guys are sponges, man. Cooper. All right, so Look at that. this is the one of the most uh, – of all the guys in the NFL, and I'll just stop it in the beginning, hold on, who stays in his frame. Every okay. time. Uh, all right. It allows him – like, he doesn't have to run a four. Look at his feet. He, watch, like, watch his feet. Watch when he makes this cut, though. Watch look, where look it goes. Can you see the toe? Wow. Look at that. In the ground. Inward. Watch his feet. Zoom in a little more here. How can I do this? Um, does this allow me to zoom in more? Am I more zoomed in now? I don't know. Yeah, you are there a little bit. A little more? Okay. Yeah, that's better. So let me see if I can just slowly. Look, look at the point. Yeah. This is perfect. See the toe? The front look inside that. part of the toe? The, the turf's coming up. The turf. It, it heel out, toe in. Right. Knee in, right? And now, now look listen, at the not you can get. This is a powerful position that allows you to get out of your brakes a little bit quicker. Okay. Right. I'm not saying that guys don't get out of those other ways. Their guys are so damn strong. Somehow they get out of those brakes fast. Right. Okay. But anatomically over time where they don't put themselves in any, they're going to make these breaks thousands and thousands. I mean, lots of times balls aren't even coming to you in, in football, right? You still have to do this break. You still got to run the route. So you don't want to put that pressure on that knee of, of just because all the times you're going to run routes and it's right. not going to come to you. Correct. So now, now, like how, many, how many targets are you actually going to get a game? But in reality, how many routes are you really running? Look how great his set, his next step is. He's still he's still and, he's, look, and you can tell like he's generating power right there. I mean, it is phenomenal. Look, look, now he's about right to break here, again. It, okay. Same thing. Yep, watch him it, put his foot in the ground. Inner part, it's not out. If it was, if this toe was out and the heel was in, Dude, he, his knee would explode. Explode as powerful as he is. Correct. Now, I will tell you the one thing. You look at that right here. And look, look at, watch his feet underneath. Look at his body frame. He's look at chest oh, oh, almost over his knees. Okay. Yep. I mean, it's Man, incredible. That's his core strength, right? Like that's his tightness in the middle to be able to move, maneuver his body right here. Boom. Look, balls are already gone. Break. Same thing. Yep. And look at his foot in the ground. Look at get look at he's even getting right. Look at that push off of that one. Look at the toe on the left hand side right there. The exactly. Left one's even look more amazing because instead of getting out yeah. of his frame, he right. turns his hips. And that's what it's all about because anatomically it starts with your feet and it works all the way up, correct? So now look, everything follows his body. Look at his arms. His arms are ready to receive the ball. Look, I'm up, hands, I'm picture, I'm catch. Look, it's, and now look, that's not a very good look in that situation. That's not a very good ball, right? Like that ball, he has to actually kind of make a play on that. You would really kind of want that out in front here so you could catch and turn right to the pylon. Instead, he has to turn around the other way. Watch him. Look at his toes. He's no, great. Now, this, he's this already is got, now he's in reaction mode now, right? He's already got, but look, he's already caught the ball. He's already got it tucked. 
right? So he's ready for the explosion. Now here's his feet. All right, now I go be a football player. Yeah. And look at that. Even this, look at that. You know, he's this is a reaction mode where sometimes you get out of your frame because of reaction. But he's done this so many times. He also he knows where he is, throw. right? He also knows where he is. In another spot, he may take this wider, but because he's down here on the goal line, he knows where, hey, I got to get to that pylon right now. Bang, I'm gone. Right. But look, he's not reaching the ball either, right? He's got that thing tucked. He knows, hey, I'm going to clear this. I'm getting in. This this route running, because route running you can control for the most 100%. part. 100%. hands on you, but – but you could really now that, and even in his reaction part where he's running, he's right. still almost completely anatomically correct. Correct. And it's harder when you have to react to something, right. but he does it just because he's done it so many times. He's able to get his body right. In a and look at the corner. Position. The corner. The corner has no idea. Look at the now corner. Look at, the corner. Right look look at how his bad position. his position is. There you go. This is uh, you know this is perfect. Look at the corner. Now he's in right. a bad look, frame. He, he, look, he's pigeon toed. He's got, you know, Out, he's not pigeon toed. He's outward toed. Right, right, right. My fault. He's, yeah. but he, look, I mean, look at, look at his knees, his legs. It's, it's just, look, it's he just. He can't react. No. If he was in his frame, he'd have a chance to make a play on this ball. So it's it, in one play, you could see, and look, these are both pros, right? Yeah, and that's the other thing, right? Like these are guys that are at a high level, but even at a high level, look, you see one guy doing it right, one guy is not is doing it wrong. That's not to say that the corner for that team right there, the Texans, doesn't do it right. You know, the next time, if it, I think it's the Texans or no, I, I think you know what I think happens. No, I well, I think that he does it more often wrong than right because, and that's what his body remembers, right? What his body remembers. So here's the other thing too. And I know this will be the argument and this is kind of where I think you and I would get blowback on something like that is like, yeah. Hey, you're looking at Cooper cup. He's a short, right? He's like one of the shorter guys in the league. How do I stay within my framework? He's if I'm short, five, he's six six, feet. Six. you know what I mean? But in the grand scheme of things, how does a guy who's six, five now stay within that frame? Let's, let's, let's find Jerry Rice. I think that's uh Jerry Rice was how tall. Six, six, two, maybe six, three. Now, we also know that when you get to that high level, receivers are kind of broken down into pseudo categories. There are guys that run certain routes really well and don't run other routes really well. Correct? Are we in agreement on that? Yeah. I mean, listen, there are guys that are uh, – but my point is that you want to – even whether you're big, small, or in between, the more – you do it the right way, like in the right position. The more, you're, the more here, it's going to just happen naturally. The better, safer you're going to be. Is that, is that is that a fair way of putting it? Not only totally. are you going to be better, but you're going to be you're, – you're going to have a – I'm just trying to find us. Uh, I also things. just think that, like, listen, like when you – when you start getting to that high level and all that kind of stuff, like, right, like now you're talking about, look, I can run routes on air and I can keep my body this way or that way. But even so, if I'm running, you know, now if we're in game mode, right, and we're in a game and I'm running a route and I'm outside of my framework, you know, who's to say that now, like you said, all of a sudden I don't have other guys that are coming in. And now with that leg kind of out there, Right. Rather than in my body, rather than in close to my body where I can protect it. It's just kind of out there. You're going to get rolled up on guys are going to tackle you and hit that. You know what I'm saying? Where I just feel like the other way you, it kind of gives you uh, less opportunity for injury. All right. Well, let's, I, I, and I don't know if we'll be able to see it here. I'm trying, I have a couple of good Jerry Rice stuff. So, um, we're, we're also using two of the best that have ever done it. No, no, but that, but who do you follow? Okay. Correct. Like, like if you want to be the best, why wouldn't let's, you look at the guys watch, that are the let's best? Let's watch Jerry Rice as an older person. Okay, running around at what is he fifty? Okay, this is 2017. This is him at like a, like a camp or something. Yeah, and he's probably still out there just doing his thing. You'll see, what you'll notice is he stays within his his frame no matter Always. what he does. All right, let's see. But that's Jerry. why we talk about certain lifts, right? Like certain lifts can help you with that explosion in that core muscles. All right, here's old man Jerry. Uh, uh, Thank look you. at him oh, run around. Look at this. Everything's tight. I mean, I this, love the fact I that he's wearing, uh, uh, he's wearing a uh, yeah, uh, yeah, look at this. this is, look, come on, look man. how tight it is. So let's let's go slow. Look, first step, look, explosion off the ball. You can tell that he's and, – and, and you know what's interesting about Jerry? Gone. He's naturally outward toed. So watching him run – Right, so he has to – Yeah. Anatomically incorrect, just his, ne his, 
his nature of how his body is, okay? So let's see when he breaks. Does he push off in he see he forces himself inward? See it? He forces himself inward, even though he's anatomically his body, the way he's you know, is more outward. He forces himself inward. Right. Well, look at his body. You can see when he goes to cut his lean, right? So he uses that weight up top see? to pull that rest of it into where he needs to be. Inward, inward, even though his his normal running style. See, because see that look, he still he, he turns his hips to run. It, it's 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 amazing because he's a naturally you can see right away he's a naturally outward toed runner. Okay, which is probably how he, why his. 40 I love how he is. makes a cut right here. I love how he makes this cut right here, like he's running away from a safety. Like, it's just great. I love it. Right, it, oh, it's great. This looks like the opening. Is he? Is this like an old school opening? Nike like high school camp or something? Yeah, it might be an old school opening. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. He's but got the magnet shorts on. Love it. I think that's so interesting um, because of the way that he he is even naturally outward. That's his you – know, like there are people that are – and then so he's, he's got to actually work more than everybody right. else because his body is – that's just – hey, bro, that's like the – that's the cards you were dealt. So you know what? You got to figure it out and work. And he knows. But think about it. He's done it so many times times right that he's created that and now he just he does it it just goes it's still here right to be like hey polish it make sure i go through it that's why i tell these young guys like they should as they do this as like when they start they should get up there and they should talk themselves through okay Here's my stance, right? Like, okay, my feet are correct. My shoulders, right? My body working up, my hips. Okay, now I'm good. I'm looking in, right? My eye. And then what's the other thing that we talk about with wideouts all the time, right? Like, what do I do with my hands? Where do my hands go, right? Do I have them up here? Do I have them hanging, right? We've seen guys do the quick cross, all that kind of stuff. Look, whatever they want to do is fine with me as long as we're not pre-snap movement doing this thing, right? But the one thing, the only rule I have is that if you're impressed, coverage or you're going to get pressed, your hands better be up so you're ready to fight and get out of there. If you keep your hands down on press coverage, that DB automatically is going to win that and get hands on you before it, and now you're erased and you're out of the play right away. So you got to make sure your hands are there and get ready to fight, get out, stack your guy, and make sure you're in your route. And that's stuff that we that's even that's down the road. You know what I'm saying? Like these first couple sessions, man, it's about catching and it's about your start. Get off the ball, catch the ball. And so like you said, it's a lot of like catching the ball, you know, standing in the backyard with dad 10 yards away or running a route across. And then the start to move, you start to move slowly. You move to the right, right. you move to the left. But uh right. so let's Here. look at this. So this Here. is you know, I always talk about what um I, I'm uh very friendly with a guy named Jeff Christensen who runs throw it deep. Uh, this well, you'll you'll see who's throwing here. But this is throw it deep, and this is their this is their work in what June. All right, he's in Arizona. And they're high school kids with this person, and you'll you'll see who it is in a second. Okay, because he he trains, and you no, see, I see who it is. Yeah, so you'll see what they're working on, right? Okay, here it is. See, look at the ball carry. What nice I talk job. about. Nice job, Patrick. Nice and right, right here. I'm sure he has a nice grip on it, but not too tight where he's trying to pop that ball. Look right? how relaxed his shoulders are. Look at those shoulders. The, Look the, at his the elbows are down. Look at his legs. The elbows are down. How many times do you see guys rolling, doing things with their elbows up? Okay. Burn. Elbows down. Good. This anatomically, ball by ear. Elbow. Right? Perfect. Good. Okay, so now let's watch here. This is all high school kids with him. Do they all look the same? Almost all of them. This kid has a little bit of an overbend here. Yeah, it's, right here. This kid's a little taller, right? They're high school kids with him. Or, That's um, a pretty big boy right there. But but look look how Pat is. Patrick is preparing to make a regular throw here. It's funny because everybody used Patch uses Patrick. As the guy who um, is is he just makes crazy platform. throws. He does all this, you know. He works this first, okay. See, like, and, and that's, what, that's what, 
and and we've talked about this and I've said this to you. I said, look, everybody wants to make all these off balance throws and throw across your body and this and that. And they use him as the example. But you got to understand something. He's he's out there when he does that stuff. He's doing it to make a play. That's not what he's doing on the regular. This is what he's doing on the regular. He's working his basic technique and mechanics so that he goes through the same process every time he gets a snap. And then he is now prepared to if I have to make that play or if I have to make that throw, I can go do it, right? All right here's what I want you to look at. See this kid, see the Patrick in, in, in red, the kid in right. black, and the kid in red Got in it. front of him. Do you notice? Look at their all their left foot, all right. the same. Inward. Inward, heels out, right. toes inward. Just like starting a receiver stance. Put your toe in so that you have that balance, and now you can bring the power. Right, and you're anatomically more correct. Look at their heels and the right, the right foot. Okay, all the same. So you, it's not a. When I tell you that there's a guy I like, and when I when look I look at zombie him, apocalypse, they're all like, no, look, look at this, look, and, and, and boom. It's not Patrick. It's a high school kid. He well, it's his uh, brother. <laughs> actually, it's not because it, that that's actually crazy. But his brother is like you know not even don't really don't keep that's him not out. Patrick. Okay, yeah. so, but but look at the all the same. Look how great this That's is. That's so funny. He has the same hairstyle. I guess he's copying Patrick. That's what I say. It's his stunt double. I should have realized he didn't have the uh, frosted tips. Um. <laughs> so look here again. These guys that are thrown to the right, they're all the same. And here's the other part, right? And this it's is amazing. The my, my whole thing is this, too. I know everybody wants to be able to throw the deep ball and do all that kind of stuff. But you know what? Like, as a younger guy, you got to build to that, right? Like, I can teach you. If, and, and, look, just by maturity in, in itself and growing and getting older, your arm strength and your distance on your throws is going to get there. You can't be like, you know what I mean? Like, all these guys, I want to throw a deep. I want to throw. My man, stick to the basics. Get down the short routes first. Now your arm strength, you build it up so that now you can hit those windows and do all that kind of stuff. But I think the most important thing is you need to know where the, where to throw the ball, right? It's all about, it's about accuracy and timing. If you can drop back and throw that ball before that guy turns on the comeback, now you're, it's a completion. If I can throw that, that corner route shallow where the defense is on, over the top and I can throw it shallow, but in front of that uh, corner that's dropping underneath, maybe in a cover two, right in front of that safety, that's a good, that's a different throw. The timing about that stuff matters, right? Like, hey, don't wait till he's open, right? He's open now. Trust your arm and throw throw it well let's 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 look at some Patrick. let's look at some patrick let's see if we can look and at we see our guys do that right and it's one of the basic things that we always have to teach in the beginning it's like hey man you don't wait till he's open he's open now so throw it those windows close quicker right the higher level of football you get the quicker the game gets and that's just all that's got to speed up all through your mechanics, everything. But that doesn't mean that now that stuff gets thrown out the window just because you're in the middle of a game. OK, you still got to be. And that's why reps are important, because now when you are dropping back and you got four guys coming at you and you got another guy off the edge over here. Your body just knows, hey, this is where the ball should be. This is how my feet are. Now let me step up here and I can throw it and let it go. If you're thinking about that stuff in the middle of a game, now we got problems because you're thinking about your mechanics and your footwork and I got to do this and I got to do that. And meanwhile, you're getting tackled or meanwhile, you're not seeing defense that just rolled their coverage. Like you got to have that muscle memory created so that it's just natural and you don't have to think out there. Absolutely. Let's let's see if we can see the this here. Man, that dude looked like Patrick Mahomes, man. He, 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 he <laughs> has the same hairstyle. I know I, we messed that up, and it, it, that's life. Um, that's that. It's good because there's only thirty people uh, that will watch the whole thing. So hey, you know, well, hey, for those thirty people right here, check it out. Legendary leadership. Got yeah, your book, buddy. All right. <laughs> oh, you have it. Yeah, there it is. There it um, is. Boardwalk Beast, and we got our, our we got our legendary leadership. 
let's see if we have it here. Let me see if I if this is it here. And look, I think I, I want to give a credit to those guys that we had that first night at our passing university, man, because those guys literally came in and, and they don't know what to expect, right? Like we can explain it, whatever, but like we also coach it at a high level. So we're telling them things, and these are young kids, man. We're talking young puppies here that are like, you know, that just love the game and kind of want to get into it. And and I think it's great that they're out there and they're doing their thing. And, and you know, they're phenomenal. They listen and they just want to get better, which is awesome. All right, so look here, Patrick. Patrick's a little bit out of his frame here. A little wide there. A but look at his arm angle. But look at his – look how he recovers. He's a little Correct. wide. But uh, obviously he's being rushed. It's a little different when you're being rushed. But look Tim. how he gets his feet to right. See how he gets his foot in the Correct. right position? It's amazing. With pressure, right? With, so with pressure. He's, he literally has a guy hanging in. on his jersey. He literally has a guy hanging on his jersey. The toe's now in, and now Boom. he gets enough on the ball. Well, that's another part, right? So guys are talking arm strength, right? Yeah, but that comes with maturing when you get in the weight room, right? When you you can get that arm strength because most guys right there cannot make that throw with just that, you know, and a guy hanging on their jersey. But he like, gets his – because right? he has such good mechanics. Exactly. He, here, here's a he great – Here's a better example. We'll and look, I, I, you know, it is – look, I don't think you get to the league unless your mechanics are solid and that type of stuff. But I, I just feel like there's always stuff to work well, on. Remember, well, remember – Some guys are very different. guys are so talented. See, here's the thing. Most people aren't some guy – these guys, okay? You want to learn from the guy – Didn't take – Are doing things anatomically correctly uh, because – Right, like – That's going to help you – in, work. Look at that. Oh, wait, hold on. I lost. Oh, here we go. All right. Here it is. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's freeze it. Now that's his drop. Look at his feet. Right there. Look at that. In toe, Boom. out, right? Heel. He looks just like those kids we looked at, right? Now right. They it, looks like he, it looks like he's going through a clinic. They have the same coach. Oh, those kids, he, This guy works with Patrick. But um, that's why I thought it was Patrick because he works with them. And maybe that's why the kids have the same haircut as him. Um, so, right. <laughs> uh, but he's been to one of their camps. Right. Right. So, but look at that. That's exactly what those kids look like. They're high school. Like I said, it looks like a zombie apocalypse. All of them are doing the same thing. It's awesome, dude. See, it's same. awesome. I mean, oh, good golly, that tells me. All right. So, but that's – I wanted to bring those up because this is what I want to do when we, we talk about these kind of things. Show things that are good. Show things that need to be corrected. It's not pointing anybody out in a negative manner. No, it's, absolutely not. These things will make the difference of making you better over time. And, I mean, I don't know. Uh, it, it, it's, it's awesome because you get the power. You're less likely to get injured. But anyway um, – I think it's also like when you do it that way, okay, right? Now that your feet are under you, you're almost doing a squat, right? Like a pseudo squat where you're actually strengthening your legs just by running routes that way, you mm -hmm. know? It's mm -hmm. one of those things like, you know, that you don't really think is happening, but it's happening. The other thing is like too, like when we're talking catching and all that kind of stuff, like for the little guys and stuff, like it's literally about just being comfortable with the ball, right? Because once you're comfortable with that, and I, look, I get it right now. They're so small. They can, when they tuck it, they can't even like keep it right here right now, you know, even using right. their right ball. But I think that's what works for them. And it's really good. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, we, we actually gone for 38 uh, minutes breaking this down. I, I really like it. Before I go, you have a gaming chair, right? Is that what you have? This thing, dude? Yeah, it's I like just perfect. got one. Dude, this so, thing is fire. Yeah, this is what I just look, got. I got this, too. Like, it goes, you know, because every now and then when you need, like, a little, like, it just goes all the way back, too. Yeah, I, I love it. I think I it's like one of the best things. Look, and now I'm glad I'm not a gamer because I'm pretty sure when the new NCAA comes out, like, I'd be addicted. Even yeah. though the college football players are rebelling, did you see that? No, what happened? Oh, they're they're pissed because uh, EA Sports only wants to give each one of them like five hundred bucks for having their name in the game, and they're like five hundred only. Are you kidding me? This is EA Sports, like NCAA twenty twenty four football. Like I should be getting more than five hundred dollars. So they might. They're right now. They're like in a situation. <laughs> well, what is what is the core of? 
That's uh, what I'm saying. I don't know like what it would what how, how do you put an amount on it? Like what does EA Sports make from Madden? Oh god, I you, I I'm curious. So they make declared revenue of 1.62 million from <laughs> uh, oh wait, no, uh, 1.62 billion in 2021 across FIFA, Madden and NHL. FIFA's probably big too. I didn't even yeah, think. Yeah, it's probably big too. So let let's uh, <laughs> I I was just doing. I was let's just say doing, it's a couple hundred. Let's say it's three hundred. Did you see the soccer player that just signed a six? I think it was a sixty-four six six hundred and forty-three million dollar deal for like a Saudi team. If you grow up, in, Google it. It's right there because no wonder the people he, in Europe that's in South he, America they, he makes he makes more than what would be a salary the total salary cap for an NFL team. That's incredible. <laughs> maybe I'm, played, maybe I have my kids. I'm in the wrong sport. country and I played the wrong sport. You got to be Ted Lasso, I guess. Oh, I could do the mustache, dude. Look at it. I'd be good with a mustache. Ted Lasso not- gets the uh, – Ted oh. Lasso took over soccer. I also uh, highly recommend Netflix, new documentary on Arnold Schwarzenegger. I watched the first one last night. Phenomenal. Really? Phenomenal. I, I mean, love this Arnold. Per- this first one took him from when he was a kid in Austria to through all his bodybuilding stuff. And then the second episode is him as an actor. And then the third one, there are one hour. And then the third one is him as governor. So you see him as Mr. Olympia and all that stuff. You see him as, you know, kindergarten cop and twins and all that. Uh, Terminator and command commando's the best one. Commando's the best one. Commando's um, the great. Commando's uh, great. Conan too. Conan's great. Predator's great. Predator's great. Too. That's uh, like, Predator was, and then like, and then he went into like the funny stuff, right? So then he was like the kindergarten cop was funny as hell. Yeah, Twins funny. with Danny DeVito was awesome, but it takes you through. It's an hour each episode of how like first one's all about bodybuilding, second one's about like you know being an actor, and then the third one is about uh being governor. So highly recommended. Okay, well I'm gonna watch it. Uh, I'm a, I was a huge, I mean, Arnold was big really? when I was a kid, you know, it's awesome. it really is awesome. I didn't know his, like, I didn't know the story of like, you know, I, he, I knew he grew up in Austria or whatever, but I didn't know like that. He was like, from the jump, he's like, look, I don't belong here. I need to get out of here. And part of being in Austria is they don't give you a passport to leave until you do like three years in the military. Do, was he, um. Did you ever see the movie? Um, oh, what is it? Um, Pumping Iron. Yeah, have you ever seen it? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Oh, it's fun. Unbelievable, dude. It's but like, just what like I... the way he looked, dude. But like, it he also sounds like, like, and obviously it's all him, right? So it's interviews with him, like now going back and forth, and he's like, he's like, look. I cared about nothing else other than bodybuilding. Like I left Austria, got to the United States, went out to LA and he just started like, like the original gold's gym. That's where he was. Yeah, That's where he lifted. He worked with that guy. And then there was like another one where he worked with that guy. Joe and Reader. He, yes. And he talked about like, look, Hey, I don't know. <laughs> but then he was a little different. Right. And then he, because that guy Wiener said to him, Hey, look, like, I understand like all this bodybuilding and all this athletic stuff, but he said at some point that's going to go away and you're going to have to use this. So Arnold like took classes and business classes in school. He wanted to be like a part of all this stuff. He started, that guy offered him um, like space in his, in his magazine for Arnold to like sell stuff, market stuff. And that's how he like, yeah. So there's like a business side of it that he was like, he marketed and he said, he goes, look, I didn't bet on anybody else other than myself. He goes, I marketed myself. I would go around. I would just be doing these poses for whatever, how much money here, how much money there. And like, people had never seen something like that. And he used to mess with other dudes and was like, dude, like you, I don't even know why you're showing up. Cause I'm going to beat you. He so, was like that guy. Yeah. He did. Listen, Lou Ferrigno, he used to intimidate Lou for Lou Ferrigno was gigantic. Well, he the told him, like, this Hulk. guy, he originally, yeah, 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 right. That's what I remember. What's the Hulk? Arnold, he talks about he was originally, like, um, like the guy who was in this movie, Hercules, was, like, his idol, right? And he had his picture on the wall above his bed and all this yeah, stuff. Um, and then Khan, maybe? Khan? Jason Steve something. Reeves? Yes, that's him. That's it. Steve Reeves. So uh, then, I know my five building. Good. It was crazy because he's like, he, so he's like, oh, I get to finally compete against Steve Reeves, right? And he like, he beat him. And then he was like, oh, I kind of felt bad. And then he's like, but I really didn't. And it's like, 
all right, Arnold, like he's hardcore, dude. And it was, it was so cool to learn about it. And he's like, I just used to like, he was like 22 and stuff, like just like getting after it, dude. And he was talking about, it, he's like, look, I never worried about a diet. Like I wasn't big on a diet or whatever. He's like, people just gave me whatever I needed supplement wise. He goes, and then wow, you did, he, he also, you know, well, you know, listen. And then he goes, and then you did steroids for four months right. before we were competing. And then you cut it off. He said it. He's like, yeah, we yeah. were all on steroids. He goes, you do it for four months while you're training to get into the competition. And then once the competition's over, you don't do it until the next time you do it. But okay. <laughs> a ma a ma dude, Arnold, Arnold is you see him on Venice Beach, dude, and he's like holding his like on his arms and stuff. And he's like, dude, I only knew a hundred words of English. Like, and one of them was like, I'd like to take you on a date. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and it's Arnold, like, Arnold, he's just, Arnold, and he's just like, sitting there back in Austria with a cigar and they're interviewing him and they're having this conversation. And he's just like, yeah, dude, this is kind of what I did. Like highly recommended, bro. You're going to love it. If you loved all that stuff, uh, you will love it. because all those other guys, it's all like old footage of him too. Like dude, in the weight yeah. room on Venice beach. I mean, these guys are like, I mean, he is Massive. massive and like the first thing when he came to america they're like hey dude you got a great chest but look at your baby calves like you don't even have calves and he's like damn i gotta work my calves like that's that you are know, arnold dude the movies of of his movies um commando i'm a big, I'm a big twins fan the comedy was good with danny devito commando was great though commando was just a pure like testosterone it was just like it was rambo it was yeah right, and you know who the girl it's was. A different you know military was setting. Do you you know who the girl was in it that he saved? Yeah, the little uh, the well, she was in other stuff too. It's Alyssa Milano. Uh, yeah. It's Alyssa Milano is the girl. Yeah, she's got a, now she has a MLB clothing line. I think NFL maybe too, but uh, yeah, Alyssa, maybe. And she's the most annoying political person on the planet, but um, uh, she makes so money Alyssa, from it. Alyssa Milano is the girl. Just because I was in love with Alyssa Milano as a young kid, I like her. And and then uh, I don't know what she even looks like now, but when she was young, and okay. then, uh, uh, but I guess I could look it up after this. Um, <laughs> so then Alyssa Milano, and then let's see, she was in a show, wasn't she? Was, was she in Who's the Boss? Yes, Who's the Boss with, with Tony Panda? <laughs> yeah, that was my show, man. That was a great show. Oh, she looks great. Tony Danza was. She looks great. She does. Okay. Oh, no, no. Absolutely. Oh, she still looks really good. That was Look a great her. show. Who's the boss was a great show. Who's the boss? That, that's when you so you were in it you probably were in the tail end of when yes. sitcoms were still She's 50 by the way. So she's your age. Oh, my oh sorry. Age. 49. Yeah, I'm 49. One more one more year. What's up? Yeah, one more year till you're a pickleball champ. 50-50. That's when I step my training up. Listen, one when you go to her page, like you Google her, type her name in. The third thing that pops up is Commando. Uh, I was that movie. Yeah, I, I, that I remember. Predator was great because every all, all these like like soldiers are in there, and you know they're all, like his name is. Do you remember his name in Predator? No, his name was Dutch. Oh God. He was joke. That's a, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, he's also got a, it's a pretty crazy life too because he talks about like his growing up and stuff like that. And his dad obviously was in the military for Austria. They lost World War II. You know what I'm saying? So he was talking about a country of kids being raised by ex soldiers with PTSD. It was tough. Like they talk about the whole thing, and you think about it, you're like, yeah, man, Austria, like. They were they got crushed World War II. They lost everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now to grow up in that, he had an older brother who ultimately he <clears throat> says that his his tough upbringing with his parents that drove him to get to the United States to be in this bodybuilding that negative whatever pushed him the the the, the that pushed him to get out, but it was something that pushed his brother a totally different way, and his brother ended up dying in a car crash for drunk driving really? because he had issues. He rather than use it as fuel to get out like Arnold did, he went the other way and went negative and just started drinking himself. So it's a pretty, it's, it's, it's depth. It's in depth, well, but he talks Arnold about didn't even stuff. go to his father's funeral. Ar he, he, he only, he, 
He says, when I went, I started the bodybuilding like stuff. I blocked. That was, I ignored everything that I was. I ignored where I came from. I ignored my parents. I blew off. He hadn't talked to his brother in years when he passed away. Cause he was so locked in. But he also, he talks about this too, dude, which is crazy. And I'll end with this. Cause I'll let you go. He talks about how, when you're so driven and you're constantly looking towards what do I do next? What do I do next? What do I do next? He goes, I don't have time to sit there and go, how do I feel today? Oh, I don't feel, I feel bad today. He goes, I didn't have time to worry about that shit. And that's what he literally says in it. He goes, cause I just went on to the next thing. What's the next thing I'm going to accomplish? What do I want there? He says, I was so goal driven that all the, whatever's going on in my head or my bad upbringing or any of that stuff, yeah. like wasn't a factor. It's interesting. He, he, he's an interesting character. He's, he, I mean, uh, he's obviously well accomplished. Dude, the first scene is him just zooming in on all of his like trophies and shit. And it's like, dude, there's like every, all these trophies. He's got all these medals and stuff. He says the thing that started when he was young, he used to hang up the pictures because he was walking by a store one day and he saw an American muscle and health magazine or whatever it was. So he used to take, he looked at it and he's like, Oh, this guy did this. And this is his workout. He goes, so I just copied whatever he did. And I did it three times a day. Really? And he just, and then he used to take the pictures from the magazines and they used to put them above his bed. And his mom used to like lose her. She's like, all these other boys, his age have pictures of girls above their bed. And my son has pictures of naked men above his bed. Where did I go wrong? Like, where did I, <laughs> Go wrong, and it's like a, it's like a big thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's wild. But you can yeah. see why he is the way he is when he talks about his parents, right? Like being raised by a dad who had PTSD from the war. His mom obviously had OCD because he talks about her being like insane about cleaning the house. Like every other day, she'd be like on her hands and knees scrubbing the floor. Like so, there's obviously something that got passed down, but he just took it and was like, "Yo, I'm getting out of here." Like, I don't belong in Austria. He's like, people in Austria, they grow up, they go to school till they're 18, they get a wife, they have kids, and they get a job. He goes, "That wasn't for me. Like, I needed to do something else. I felt it in my bones to go do something." Okay, bro. I guess you did. Freaking. Government. I, I love when people think that. That's yeah. what I've always liked about Arnold. Like, he thought. Like, I remember when he was in his movies career, and like he could have. He was originally a terrible actor. Yeah, and horrible. He he worked so hard at it and to get, you know, and he became this action star. He was making like 20 million a movie and he could barely like he didn't even speak English great. And um last amazing. action hero. Oh, I remember that one. That was a good one too. <laughs> like such a, like what? I I I, I it, when his movies would come out, I was immediately going to the movies to watch it. Like Twins was great because Danny DeVito and him together, like just, it was the premise of the movie itself was like, whatever, but it just does two guys. Like, it's just kind of funny, especially when you get a guy like those two guys together. But, there, there was a time right. where every movie he would put out was a hit. Right. Terminator. Let's see. What, what was his, he did, what was his movies? Oh my God. Yeah. Dude, he has a Rolodex of them. Jingle all the way with Sinbad. <laughs> jingle, jingle all the way. I've seen that one. Oh, Batman and Robin. Remember, he was Mister Freeze. Yeah, he was the Freeze. He played a great. That was a great. Who was that? That was the. They always say that's the worst Batman. Was that with George Clooney? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in uh, True Lies. That was a good movie. That was a great one too. Because uh, what's her name was in there. Total Jamie Recall. Was Total Recall was a good one. That's where they put like the chip in them, right? No, that, kind that, of what the government's doing now. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. He had a string. He went from right when he went from like because they Conan, saw these. It's just wild. I think Conan, it's so. Cool. Couple of Conan to to Terminator. Red Red Sony wasn't very good. I saw it. Commando Raw Deal was good. Predator The Running Man. Remember The Running Man? That was one of those quiet ones. That was the one where they were in the game show and you 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 were like instead of going to jail. They put you in a uh, game show and you had to um, 
try to escape and he wins, he gets through, he kills everybody. <laughs> which is every one of his movies. He kills yeah, what's great movies. is yeah, that's that's what's great too. Is like he always he's killing everybody. He kills he everybody. Like, he, like, did, he did like two Terminators. <laughs> one the Terminators. The, the Commando. I I think one time I was watching it. it. This was like about 15 years ago, and I uh, I played this game where I counted as how many people he killed. It yeah. was so many people he killed in the movie. It was just like it was like it was oh, some extreme yeah. number. He also he also did the other one, Junior, where he was pregnant. Oh yeah, well he was ahead of his time. He was a trans. That's what I'm saying. Talk about crazy roles. That and listen, he was also a guy that's like you know he's also a guy that's like willing to just you know do whatever, try it's it crazy. out. We don't care. Listen, you you look at his life. He goes from bodybuilder to actor to act to star, really, right? Like a, a star to governor. My man, you've lived a very good life in three different, very different, you know. Is he oh, how old our positions? How old is he? Sixty. He might be older than that. Arnold is. Why don't they list his age? Oh, here it is. Uh, Arnold is 75. Wait till you see him in this, dude. If I look like that at seven, I, it's, oh my God. He still lifts, dude. There's like in this thing, they show him and he's still in there like, and you look at his and he's still got like a, dude, let's go. <laughs> Personal records. His squat is 545. Bench press 520. Deadlift 683. Clean and jerk, clean and jerk, two ninety eight. It's okay. Oh my god! Clean Wait, is this, pound, is this pounds or kilograms? Because like he's from Austria. No pounds, pounds. Okay. He obviously he didn't do the clean and jerk or the snatch or clean and press very much. He obviously squatted. He right, it was probably squat, he, deadlifted. he deadlifted. He yeah. deadlifted. Yeah, six eighty three. He deadlifted. <laughs> Obviously, he was strong too. Yeah, so because he yeah. says it in the thing, he's like, "I used to deadlift like seven hundred pounds." He's like, "You kidding me?" That is uh, Arnold, Arnold. Arnold. Wow, that's no, like that's it. like it's a great time. It literally just I'm came out. Watch it. Oh, it's good. But well, it'll be. There's a couple of great ones. So that one, then the Urban Meyer thing is coming out. I can't oh, wait for that. About, about his whole Florida run. I mean, look, you're talking. Aaron Hernandez, Tim Tebow, the Pouncey brothers. Uh, who is the Who is the fast? The real fast. Receiver, Harvin, uh, Harvin? Who, yeah, Percy Harvin, like Cam Newton. Did you see his? Um, what's the guy that used to work coach with him that has his own podcast? A pretty popular one. The guy who coached with him at Ohio State. I think he got in trouble or whatever. Oh, his, I don't know. You, you should watch. You should watch it. I see. I gotta check podcast. it out. Well, anyway, so I'm real big on. Uh, obviously, I've told you a thousand times the pivot. That's my. That's a big one for me. I love listening to that one. That one's really good. Busting with the boys is pretty good. That's Tyler Lewan and uh, what's his uh, another like small time linebacker. But it, it's good there. And then the uh, the Kelsey brothers do one. New Heights. It's called. What a pot, dude. The two of them together is ridiculous. So this one's about college football. Okay, and so this guy was Urban Meyer. Remember the guy who got in like a little bit of trouble with Urban Meyer? Like I don't know. Anyway, it wasn't the strength guy he brought in, right? It was a it was a co. Anyway, so this guy coached with Urban Meyer. Okay, and then he um. So he talked about when Urban Meyer came to Florida, he said, "I am recruiting," and he got this from Lou Holtz because Lou Holtz, I read his book. And he said when he came into Notre Dame, he couldn't believe how slow everybody was. And he said, we're, we're only now from now on recruiting guys that have bona fide uh, track times. And right. So he only he, recruited speed. That's what Urban did. So Urban said, we're only recruit. We, we want track athletes that we could that we could make into tough football players. Right. So, right. so, so he took all those guys like Harvin and all these track stars, basically. I mean. And and turn them into mega stars of Florida. He turned them into mega stars at Ohio State because he was talking about that Ohio State, as good as they are, they don't have that many guys anymore that are burners. Like when when they had all those guys. Is it move the sticks? It might be move the sticks. It's with um. Let me see. Uh, podcast. It's very good. 
No, Bucky Brooks. No, is that is? Uh, let me look. Uh, Bucky Brooks is the guy. No, no, I think Bucky Brooks is the blonde hair guy. Well, look. Either way, I'm just telling you that's going to be one hell of a documentary. That's not move the sticks. Um, let me see. Former Ohio State coach podcast. It's uh, Zach Smith. Oh, that's yes. Menace to sports. Isn't it his brother-in-law? Yeah, that's the guy that got him in trouble. Yeah, he got him in trouble for uh, beating up a female, I believe. Yeah, it's Zach Smith. His podcast is great, dude. Oh, my God. I didn't know. Let's go. You got to watch his podcast. It's great. What the heck's it? He lets it fly, dude. He Menace, not... to, Menace to sports? Yes, that's it. Yeah. He lets it fly. Oh, former Ohio State coach Zach Smith keeps it real, talking all the things college football and sports in general. So what he did, right, is he got in trouble. He's now labeled the bad boy. So he just runs with it. Okay, I'll start a podcast and I'll just say everything that I really feel. I'm not sugarcoating anything and I'll I'll monetize it. His podcast. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. He, he also all has right. a, a lot of hot takes. I'll, I'll let you go because you got to get rolling. But, hey, um, good night. Yeah, tonight, uh, myfootballcamps.com slash passing. You still uh, still get in. We're going all summer. And then um, uh, Come we'll get see work. you guys soon. Uh, it, you know, keep competing. Keep getting out there. If you guys want to go to camps, myfootballcamps.com. You don't need the slash. You'll see it. Check it out. We got a lot of stuff going on, fellas. Hey, just continue to work. Work hard, work hard, work hard. That's all I got to say. Right, work hard. Keep going. Perfect. All right, we're out.